The Awakened King DLC for Remnant 2 is out now along with exciting and powerful items that players can play and experiment with, create new and interesting Remnant 2 builds. But the greatest addition is the latest archetype, the Ritualist, a very exciting archetype that plays with status effects and can unleash them on enemies. It's been a while since we released a build for Remnant 2, but with the Awakened King now available, this is the best time to do so. The first of this lineup is the Plague Harbinger, a fun and engaging Remnant 2 build that takes advantage of the Ritualist and Archon special abilities. This build heavily relies on the Archon's Havoc form skill to deal a good amount of damage and bolster it further with deadly status effects from the Ritualist repertoire. This Remnant 2 build was designed to consistently skip or reduce the cooldown phase of both Miasma and Havoc form, allowing us to use both skills frequently in combat and focus more on dealing damage while using mods in between. A build perfect for clearing enemy waves and taking down bosses with a unique playstyle. Note that all the items and archetypes locations can be found on our official Remnant 2 wiki, but we will provide the Ritualist item locations. We'll be starting with the Archon that serves as the main archetype for this build because of the Havoc Form skill. Havoc Form will allow the user to perform a unique stance and unleash shock-inflicted lightning tendrils for a limited duration. This skill can wipe out enemy waves with ease and even deals a great amount of damage to bosses. Not only does the Havoc Form stance allow players to inflict damage, but it can also generate a shield that reduces incoming damage, and also allows players to perform Blink Evade that can easily dodge enemy attacks while damaging surrounding enemies simultaneously. The Archon's perks also play a pivotal role in this build. Having Tempest as a prime perk, which increases overall mod power generation, is a welcome addition as we will be playing with mods later on. The damage perk Amplify is a strong addition as well, that further boosts mod damage overall. The Archon's utility perk, Spirit Within, reduces mod power requirements and refunds, ensuring that we can almost always cast mods when doing rotations in combat. Lastly, the Power Leak Relic perk grants us the ability to generate mod power using relics at any point we desire. The Ritualist is the latest DPS archetype that the Awakened King DLC added, and a very interesting one to play with. A versatile archetype that bases its damage output on prolonged multiple status effects inflicted on enemies. For this build, we will be using the Miasma skill that will effortlessly apply Bleeding, Burning, Overload, and Corroded to all enemies within 15 meters. Each one of these status effects mentioned deals damage over time to targets, making the skill a powerful one that will bolster overall DPS. Each of the status effects mentioned can last for a good while thanks to the Ritualist Affliction main trait, which will be discussed later on. Its damage perk, Wrath, is a total beast as well, adding 18% critical chance and 20% more damage to enemies affected by negative status effects. To get this archetype, you need to progress in the new area in the DLC. When reaching the central area that looks like an inner slum, you will eventually notice a series of lined up boats that you can use to reach certain places. One of these boats will lead you to a hidden tunnel or underground section where a cave is located. Head inside the cave and soon you'll notice a witch who's in the middle of the room. Take her out and pick up the ragged poppet on the ground and bring it to Wallace to unlock the Ritualist archetype. Let us now take a look at equipment we'll be using for this build with some suggestions. As mentioned previously, the main goal of this build is to skip the cooldowns of Miasma and Havoc form so players can use said skills much more frequently in combat. Resetting a skill cooldown is possible by taking advantage of the Devoured Loop Ring, a ring that grants the player the ability to reset their skill cooldowns with a 1% chance in every critical hit that they deal to enemies. In this fashion, we need every critical chance augment we can get to achieve this goal. Unlocking this ring is a different story, so players who do not have this ring can explore alternatives that we will be discussing as well. Let's begin with weapons first. We need as many critical hits as we can get, so it's advisable to use an automatic long gun like the Chicago Typewriter. Because of its generous magazine capacity and ammo reserves, scoring critical hits will be an easy task. Increasing critical chance and critical damage is the momentum's job, thus we find this is the best mutator for this setup, and is simply one of the best mutators in the game. For mod, I picked the Firestorm mod due to its insane firepower and damage over time that can last for 15 seconds. Since the build is concentrated on skill usage, this mod let me use it and do its thing while I can focus on dealing damage while in Havoc form. The stream of super hot acid gas that can inflict corroded to targets by using the nebula is perfect for this build. However, I picked this handgun because of its mod, the Nano Swarm. It unleashes a swarm of nano machines that seek nearby targets with a very reasonable range and damage over time. Switch to Nebula, fire the mod, and you're off to the races. When the Firestorm and Nano Swarm stack together, it works like a charm when your goal is to deal tons of damage over time. These mods score critical hits and can help us reset our skill cooldowns as well, and these alone pack quite a punch. The melee weapon, on the other hand, can be anything according to your preference. We will not be using any in this Remnant 2 build, but just in case you're curious, I'm using this steel scythe just for the aesthetics. 
I paired it with one of the latest mutators, the Tainted Blade. This mutator increases the weapon's damage when the target is suffering from a corroded status. Now that the weapons are out of the way, it's time for us to discuss the rings and amulets. The reason why this build works is it consists of arguably the best rings in the game. For the amulet, we do have a handful of options to consider, but for this setup, I highly suggest using the Nightweaver's Grudge to gain an additional 20% critical chance and haste when your character is near an entity suffering from a status effect. With this Remnant 2 build, it's easy to achieve this condition. You will be spamming Miasma in combat, and your character is not excluded from the set condition. So we will be equipping a specific ring that will allow us to self-inflict a bleed status later on, so the critical chance and haste from Nightweaver's Grudge will be in effect all of the time. As mentioned previously, the Devoured Loop ring is one of the suggested rings for this setup. The Devoured Loop can give us the chance to reset our skill cooldowns of Miasma and Havoc form with every critical hit we deal to our enemies. Remember, this is the main reason why we're stacking as many crit augments as we can. The second ring that I would like to use is the Burden of the Gambler. This ring disables enemy weak spots, which I found horrible. However, the caveat is that the Havoc skill can't hit weak spots anyway, and this Remnant 2 build aims to spam the skill during combat. The additional 20% critical damage and 10% critical chance are so enticing for this build, making it one of the essentials. For the third ring, I'm using the Atonement Fold ring to self-inflict bleed on myself and increase the build's critical chance by another 10%. This is the ring that I mentioned earlier that will work hand-in-hand -hand with the Night Reaver's Grudge. This is also one of the new rings that you can get from playing the DLC for the first time by exploring one of the latest dungeons. And for the last ring, I like using the Kinetic Cycle Stone, which increases mod and skill cast speed by 20%. Skill cast speed affects the Havoc form. The higher the skill cast speed percentage you have, the more damage that Havoc form can output. Players will get to choose which relic they prefer for this build. If you're worried about healing, this build's traits can cover it for us later on. I use the Tranquil Heart to take advantage of its passive 2 health regeneration per second, and upon using it, this relic doubles all health regeneration for 15 seconds. Relic Fragments are a different story, as they can give great stat boosts to this build. I highly suggest using Elemental Damage Boost, Skill Damage Boost, and Modern Skill Cast Speed Boost. These fragments are tailored to improve the overall DPS of our mods and the Havoc Form skill. I've had so much fun playing with traits lately since the cap was raised to 85, which gave me more options. The Plague Harbinger build will give anyone the freedom to use the traits they think will work best, so feel free to be creative around it, but personally, my setup is as follows. Choosing the Archon Archetype will grant the build with a free level 10 Flash Caster, which grants the build with mod and casting speed increases. While the Ritualist Archetype's free trait, which is Affliction, increases status effect duration by 100%. Since we are applying constant status ailments to our targets, this trait works perfectly. A level 10 triage trait can help to improve this build's overall health regeneration capabilities. Next would be a level 10 regrowth trait that keeps our character healthy, especially when offsetting the bleeding status effect that the Atonement Fold Ring inflicts. I also upgraded Vigor to level 10 to increase her overall survivability. This build plays a lot with mods and skills, so I suggest you upgrade the Spirit trait to level 10 to enjoy an additional 20% mod power generation following with a level 10 Expertise trait that reduces your skill cooldown by 20%. Although this build aims to skip our skill cooldowns as much as possible, having a skill cooldown reduction may help if the Devoured Loop Ring fails to reset our skills, which will be discussed more later on. A level 10 Siphoner skill is a must, as this will be our main source of healing. You'll be throwing out a lot of damage to your enemies, so expect to regain any lost health in a short period, especially when in Havoc form. I also upgraded the Fitness trait to level 10 as it increases evade distance by 30%. I find this trait useful, especially when the Havoc form expires. This Remnant 2 build only wears light armor and will unlikely survive most of the boss attacks in Apocalypse, so you'll need to rely purely on dodging. The next trait on the list is a level 10 footwork. Your movement speed while doing the Havoc form lightning attacks is directly affected by this trait. I highly suggest specking the footwork as there are many instances that you can just avoid attacks while you can move freely around the arena while zapping your target without the need of Blink of Aid, leading to more DPS. The last suggested trait for this build is the Glutton trait to quicken our relic usage speed. Upon consuming a relic, the Ritualist Relic trait allows us to transfer any status ailments to the surrounding enemies, and don't forget that this build always has the Bleed status effect active. This means that in every relic charge that you consume, you inflict bleed on nearby targets. This is a convenient way to ensure that your enemies will always have a negative status effect, and enjoy that damage boost from the Ritualist damage perk as well. The Archon's Relic perk will also provide you an instant mod power just in case you need the boost. That's already at least 85 points in total. I do want to mention that level 10 Untouchable is a great trait as well, 
since we will be relying on pure dodging with this build when not in Havoc form. And lastly, a level 10 kinship trait can be helpful as Firestorm can kill us if we get caught in it or your mates when playing multiplayer. Feel free to experiment and add the traits that will suit your playstyle. Now for Concoction, I'm running this Remnant 2 build with the Xenoplasm to have an additional 10% skill cooldown reduction, especially if the Devoured Loop failed to reset our cooldowns, or use Mudtooth Tonic to have a bit more survivability. Final tips. A couple of things that I want to share about this Remnant 2 build before we discuss some potential issues that you can encounter with it. Instead of Night Ogre's Grudge Amulet, you can use the Hyperconductor to gain double skill charges but increase your skill cooldowns by 50% and reduce mod power generation by 15%. By equipping the Hyperconductor, you'll have a sure two skill rotations that you can unload into your target and deal a considerable amount of damage. However, your critical chance will be lower since the 20% crit chance from Nightweaver's Grudge is gone, and it is possible that you might have a hard time resetting your cooldowns, and you'll have longer cooldowns after the two sets of rotations. Probability Cord is a ring that increases your critical damage by 30% and also works well in this build since you'll be dealing a lot of critical hits anyway, and additional damage is a welcome addition. If you don't have the Devoured Loop Ring unlocked, I've been using the Sapphire Dreamstone that allowed me to have a chance to reduce my skill cooldowns by 3% in every critical hit. This ring can help you lower your cooldowns drastically, especially with this build. If you don't prefer the Firestorm mod for various reasons, I suggest picking up the Corroded Rounds mod instead, which increases our ranged critical chance by 15%, and can help you land more crits with the Chicago Typewriter. The Plague Harbinger is by no means a perfect Remnant 2 build, thus I suggest experimenting with the rings and unlock traits that you have depending on the boss you're fighting. However, the ones I suggested in general are the general setup I'm using, and work well in most of the boss fights in the game. One of the biggest issues I had with this build is obviously when fighting elemental resistant buffed bosses since you rely on elemental attacks, especially when Havoc form. You can still win in these kinds of fights, it will just be slower since you're weaker in terms of your damage output. And lastly, there are flying enemies that the Havoc Form's lightning attack can't simply reach, making them more challenging, while ground-type bosses, on the other hand, are much easier to deal with. So that wraps up our Plague Harbinger build. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a new build using the new archetype. We will have some more builds coming out. What builds are you guys playing with the new DLC? Are you guys playing it? What do you think so far? Let me know in the comments below.